Hello everyone. This video is on the Newton-Alta assignment for section 6.1 part 2 called compound interest. All right, so in this video I'm going to be going over a preview version of this assignment. So I hope you understand that the questions I see in this video may not be the same questions that you see but when you work on the assignment yourself. But the objectives are the same and the structure should be the same, so I'm hoping that watching me do a few of these here helps you in some way when you work on the assignment on your own. All right, so the assignment page, you should be seeing the title, the mastery bar telling you how far along you've gotten, the objectives, and it looks like there's only the one objective. So hopefully this is short. And then under the current objective, you should be seeing a question related to that objective. And at the bottom of every question, there should be a feedback button, where you can send feedback to Newton if you wish. You will not have this instructor cheat button. It's for instructors only. Uh, but you will have a more instruction button, which if you're struggling with a topic, try clicking on this and you'll be taken to a page with some reading or some videos to study. And then you'll be given questions related to, related to that instruction. And getting through those questions will progress you through the assignment. So, a useful tool. All right, so again, the only objective is calculate compound interest. All right, so I'm going to be assuming you've read, you know, the text at openstacks.org related to this, or you've read through the more instruction or studied something related to this. I'm just going to be writing out the formulas that you're going to need to know and then using them. All right, I'm not going to be developing any formulas here. Just doing some examples where you're using compound interest formulas. So in fact, I'm going to talk about that right now. So the compound interest formulas, there are two of them you should know. The first is when you're compounding interest n times a year. So a, f a finite number of times, one time, or two times, or four times, or twelve times, and so on. But a finite number of times. All right, so here's the formula. It's a of t, so you have a f an exponential function here. That's why it's in this chapter. a of t, or just a, equals, you have this capital P times and then you have a base to a power. The base is 1 plus r divided by n, and then the power is n times t. Right, that's all in the exponent. And what these letters mean is the following. p is what they call the principal or the present value of the money, of the account, or the loan, or whatever. Uh, this is just the initial amount. This is the initial amount in the account, or the initial amount of the loan, or the initial amount invested. But it's also referred to as principal or present value. That Thus the capital P. R R is the annual percentage rate
otherwise known as APR. You might have heard that word when you know coming working with credit cards or something or loan again. Zero percent APR. You know that you've heard APR on commercials before, I'm sure. Uh, this is also called the nominal rate, and both of these, you know, uh, annual percentage rate, nominal rate, you know, have the word rate in it, so that's probably what they're called, you know, R, I'm calling it R here for rate. Now, don't write this as a percentage, though. Uh, you, you're you're going to write this as a decimal. All right, so if I said the rate, the APR was 5%, you're not going to write 5 for R, you're going to write 0 0.05, right? what 5% is as a decimal. N, the lowercase n, is the number of compounding periods in a year. In other words, you know, the number of times interest gets added in a year. And depending on what words you're seeing, you should be able to easily tell the value of N. Uh, if interest is compounded annually, that's once a year, N is 1. Semi-annually is every six months, that's twice a year, N is 2. Quarterly it's every three months, that's four times a year, n would be four. Uh, monthly, that's 12. Weekly would be 52. Daily would be 365, and that's probably as big as that's going to get. But you should know that based on the words that are being spoken and how many, time, you know, how many times interest is being compounded in a year. Uh, T is the number of years that have passed. Right, it's, a, it's time in years, right, t for time. And then of course A of t, right, or just capital A, is the amount. You know, the amount an account is worth, or the amount you owe on a loan, whatever. If no further money is added or taken away, <laughs> if you just leave things alone. Uh, amount after t years. So that's a lot. All right. So this is if you compound interest, add interest a finite number of times in a year. Now the second compound interest formula I would expect you to know is what if you're compounding interest continuously? So interest is being added at every instant, right? every moment, an infinite number of times throughout the year. So compounding interest, and the key word here is continuously. All right, so there's a totally different formula for this because n is going to infinity you can't plug in, you can't use this formula up here because you can't plug in the number infinity. You're going to have a formula for compounding continuously that doesn't involve n. And it's the following, a of t. So the amount the account will be worth, you know, after t years, if everything's left alone, is equal to p, right, so that's that principle again, times e to the r times t power. So the exponent on e is r times t. The APR, the rate, times the time in years. Remember, e is a number. Euler's constant. e is approximately 2.7. You know, maybe 1828, 1828, and so on. You know, it's, it's about 2.7. It's like pi. It's an irrational number. E is 2.718281828459045. Blah, 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 blah. Goes on forever, without ending, without repeating, like pi, like any irrational number. All I really care about is that you know how to find E on a calculator. 
and also that you know that E is about 2.7, a little under 3. So whenever you see the E, you'll, you'll have an, a rough idea about its value. And these are it. Now we're going to be reading these problems, and we'll be given enough information that when we go into one of these formulas, we'll know everything but one value and solve for that value. Alright, so the first question. Dawson is saving for a down payment to buy a house. He's opened a bank account that earns 2.5% interest compounded monthly. So that's not continuously. Right? That's monthly, 12 times a year. So I'm going to be using that first formula with the N. How much should Dawson invest in the account so that the account balance after six years is $20,000? And then round your answer to the nearest dollar. Okay. So, got the formula. And I'll write out all the key information that we were given. It's got to be this first one, right? Because again, he says compounded monthly. Right? They said interest was compounded monthly. That means, you know, 12 times a year. So N will be 12. The interest rate, the APR, the nominal rate. So this is, this account earns 2.5% 2 per, 2 interest. 2.5%. Now remember, I'm not going to use 2.5. Remember what percent means. Percent means divided by 100. 2.5 divided by 100 is actually 0 0.025. This is the number. I'm going to be using for R in the formula. Now they said, you know, Dawson wants the account for, you know, to have $20,000 after six years. So the time that has passed will be six years. Right? So I'll put six for T. And then A of six, right, or A of T, the amount after six years, he would like to be $20,000. So the only piece of information that I don't have is P. And that's what we're asked to find, right? Find P. Find that principle, that initial amount, right? The initial investment. The question is, you know, how much should Dawson invest so that A of 6 is 20000 so I pop all this stuff in. So we got 20,000 on the left, right? That's the A, the amount that the account will be worth. Uh, equals, you know, I don't know P. So I leave it as P times, and then the base is 1 plus 0 0.025, right? That's the R, 2.5% as a decimal, divided by N. And divided by 12, this whole thing is the base. And then it's raised to the n times t power, so 12 times 6, or to the 72nd power. Really, this exponent is just how many times interest gets added over the entire time. It's n times a year for t years, you know, 12 times a year for 6 years, that's 72 times. Well, now I solve this for p. And this is very simple, in my opinion. See how I have P times some number? Well, just divide by that number, and you'll get P alone. So the principle will be this 20,000 over here, divided by you know whatever this number is, this base in power. So the quantity 1 plus 0 0.025 divided by 12 to the 72nd power, right, 12 times 6. And this is what I'm going to enter into a calculator. Now, I can just go to the Desmos website, desmos.com, free online graphing calculator. 
And off to the left here, I'll just enter my calculation. You know, 20,000 divided by, and then in the denominator, the quantity 1 plus 0 0.025 divided by 12. Close the parentheses on that and raise that to the 72nd power. And we're asked to round to the nearest dollar. So the nearest whole number, which would be $17,217, right? Because the tenths place is 8. That would bump that ones place up. So approximately $17,217. I wrote that down here and circled it. And this is what I'm going to enter. This is how much Dawson would have had to put into this account in order for it to be worth $20,000 six years later. So I'm going back to the assignment and entering that number, 17 to 17. And submit. Great. Again, please, you know, after you enter an answer, it will provide you with, you know, well, tell you whether you're right or wrong, and then provide you with an answer explanation. Please read through these answer explanations. Uh, make sure you understand why something was correct or incorrect. Now, I they rounded this thing here to like looks like nine decimal places and then divided like I, I wouldn't even worry about rounding till the very end All right. just enter the calculation as is and then round at the very end if I were you alright next question same objective right? calculate compound interest so this time we know the principle we know the investment, the initial amount. Carla invests $10,000 into an account with a 2.2% interest rate. I think they meant, they meant to have the word rate here. That is compounded annually. That's just once a year, so I'm again going to be using that first formula. How much money will she have in this account if she keeps it for five years, right, and, and leaves it alone? This is this is all about just leaving it alone. What will how will money grow if you leave it alone and you know accounts pay interest and stuff for five years? Uh, round your answer to the nearest dollar. Do not round at any other point in the solving part. Right, like I said earlier, don't round till the very end. Don't round till your final calculation. It'll make it more accurate. Alright, so back to my page. Let's flip it over. Again, we're using this formula because we're compounding once a year. All right. It said compounded annually. So n equals 1. Uh, the interest rate was 2.2%. Again, I'm going to write that as 0 0.022. What does it mean to you know, take 2.2, divide it by 100? Uh, the principle we know this time, right? We know P, the initial investment, the initial amount was 10,000. And we know the time. You know, they asked how much will be left, how much will this account be worth when you know, five years have passed. So I know everything except a, what's a of 5, right? So a of 5, right, the amount after 5 years, will be 10,000 times, and then your base and exponent. Now the base is 1 plus you know, 0 0.022 divided by 1. Really, you don't need to write divided by 1, because n is 1. Uh, then raised to the nt, 1 times 5. But that's just 5. All right, so I'm going to enter this calculation, but you know, not write these 1s here on my uh, on the Desmos calculator. Let's get rid of that. So principal, 10,000. Quantity, 1.022. That's just 1 plus 0.022. Raised to the fifth power. Right, 1 times 5. And then rounding to the nearest dollar, the nearest whole number, that'd be $11,149.
And again, I wrote that and circled that on my paper just now. Okay, and that's what I'll enter back, back in the assignment. 11,149 dollars. Great. All right, uh, next. Okay, so let's read through this. Scott is saving for a down payment to buy a house. So this is like that first example. Now the account earns 7.7% interest compounded semi-annually. That's twice a year. So again, I'm using that first formula. And he wants to have $10,000 in five years. What must his principal be, right? So this is another one, like the first example, where I don't know P. I know A of five. Right? I know the amount after five years. And I'm trying to find P. Round your answer to the nearest cent. So the nearest hundredth this time. And do not include the dollar sign. All right. All right. So once again, this formula, because I'm, I'm compounding a finite number of times a year, right? They said compounding semi-annually. That means n equals 2. The interest rate was 7.7%, which I'll write as 0 0.077. Uh, the um, uh, T was five years, right? The amount after five years was, you know, he wants it to be $10,000 after five years. We want to find P. So I just put all this stuff in. You got 10,000 for the amount equals, I don't know P, I don't know the principal times the base would be 1 plus 0 0.077 divided by 2 raised to the 2 times 5 or to the 10th power, you know, the n times t. And then just like before, if I want p alone, I just divide by this number, this base and power. So the principal is going to be 10,000 divided by this base and exponent, this 1 plus 0 0.077 divided by 2 uh, to the tenth power, right? Two times five, and I'll, I'll punch this in, and we'll round to the nearest cent, right? Again, that's the nearest hundredth this time, two decimal places. So ten thousand divided by, and then in parentheses down here, one plus point oh seven seven divided by two, and then that down there raised to the tenth power, and rounding to the nearest cent. Be six thousand eight hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-six cents, because the the thousand the, uh, the thousandth place is six. You would bump the hundredth place up by one. So approximately six thousand eight hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-six cents would be the nearest cent, and that's what I'll type in. I'll just go to the assignment and enter that. And it says, "Don't put the dollar sign, right? Just put the number." Six eight five three point eight six. Great. So that's how much uh, Scott would have to put into this account in order to have ten thousand dollars in five years. Right, again, if he just left it alone and it paid that interest all the time, it's compounded semi-annually. All right, one more question should be based on my progress. All right, so this is another one that's compounded monthly. I just want to warn you, all right? Just want to warn you. So far, these four problems I'm looking at, we were compounding, you know, a, a finite number of times in a year. You may come across problems where they say compounded continuously. So just please be aware of that, that if you see the word continuously, you are using this formula here. Principal times E, that 2.7 number, to the RT power. All right, that's your amount. No N anywhere. Right, so just, just be aware of that, please. And uh, hopefully 
if you do come across, you'll be able to figure it out. It's very, I mean, there's similar problems. There really are. Just So this one here, the total amount paid on a 35-year loan was $98,000. If the interest rate was 4.1% and compounded monthly, again, what was the principal? What was that? In, what was the initial amount? The initial loan. Round your answer to the nearest dollar. Right, so this is very similar to the other ones where we solve for p, solve for the principal. So again, this formula. Compounded monthly, so n equals 12. 12 times a year. Uh, the interest rate was 4.1 percent. I'm writing 0 0.041 for that. That's 4.1 percent. They said it took 35 years to pay this loan off. T equals 35. And then the amount that was paid off after these 35 years, $98,000. And then we want to find P. So we have 98000 on the left. The amount equals you know the principal, which I'm asked to find the initial amount of the loan, times 1 plus you know, 0 0.041 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 35 power, right, the n times t power. And we divide by this base in power to get p alone. So what I'm going to enter in my calculation is 98,000 divided by this base in power, 1 plus 0 0.041 divided by 12 uh, to the, now you can, I'm just going to type this, 12 times 35. Actually, that'd be 420, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it would just be a uh, 70 times 6. So I'm just going to write 420 up here. That's 420. You can write 12 times 35 as well. Just make sure it's in the exponent. All right, and then uh, back to my calculator. So we had, you know, the amount was $98,000 dividing by that base, 1 plus 0 0.041 divided by 12, divided by that number of times we compound in a year raised to the 12 times 35 or 420 power. So the initial amount of the loan to the nearest dollar would be 23,000. All right, 23,392 dollars was, was the initial amount of the loan of the loan rounded to the nearest dollar. So that's what I'll enter in here. 23 3 9 Submit and that should be doing it for this preview version of this assignment. Great. All right. So and as as I said at the top of the video, you know the questions I saw here may not be the same questions you see. And uh, remember, I've been warning you: you might see the word continuously. So just be aware of that. Understand the that the use of the other formula that I've written out. Um, but Still, the problem should be very similar. Still, you know, you either find the amount or the principal. I'm assuming, uh, and to find the principal, you're just going to have to divide by whatever e to the r t is right, in the continuously formula. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah, the questions might not be the same, but uh, the objectives are the same. Right, the structure is the same. So, I'm hoping that watching me do these questions here help you in some way when you're trying to do this assignment on your own. And thank you very much for watching.